Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out-of-this-world story from our space. Confronted my cheating brother in the affair partner's house, and I'm supporting his sister-in-law. With update. I'm a 35 female. Have my own daycare. A small son and a husband I love. And a marriage we are working on. So far successful. When my husband had an emotional affair, the one person I confided in, in real life, was my brother, Andy. I've served and went two tours to Iraq. Not from the US, by the way. And Andy followed suit a few years after me. We actually were there at the same time, my second time and his first. But in different functions and groups. I felt so weak and humiliated after my husband's emotional affair and still wanting to stay with a man that cheated and feeling like, wow, I know I deserve better than this. Am I settling when staying? Andy helped me understand that as long as I did what I wanted to and to hell with the rest, you know, then I still have my pride. He was also very angry with my husband, but civil when they met. Yesterday, Friday, I got a call from Andy's wife, Bella. She's sobbing and barely coherent, as she is also whisper-talking, apparently trying poorly to hide the drama from the kids, three and five years old. Anyway, I go to the at-home office and ask my husband if he can finish early and look after our boy. The other kids from my daycare already left. I explained something was going on with Bella and I wanted to check in with them. My husband quickly finished the work that needed to be done, right there and then, and 20 minutes later, I was on my way to Bella. Their place is maybe 30 minutes away from us. Bella was a mess and Andy, MIA. By now, it was early evening, so I put Bella in bed with tea, bathed the kids, and threw together something randomly from their fridge for them to eat. Then we all sat with Bella in their bed and watched silly animal videos on YouTube, and luckily, it seemed to cheer Bella up quite a bit. The kids laughing had a good effect. Then I tucked the kids in. They fussed a bit about not staying up late on a Friday. Mostly the oldest, the youngest doesn't know Friday from any other day. <laughs> but I told them I needed some alone girl time with her mom and said, We'll drink wine, eat those dry crackers with the smelly cheese and talk. A lot. Oh, they'd rather sleep than partake in that. <laughs> After I made a tray with just that, crackers, cheese and wine, and a little chalk that I found in my husband's stash in the car. As I settled in their bed next to Bella, she had found their iPad and surprisingly casually tossed it over before serving herself to the tray. On the iPad was her Facebook, with an open chat tab, from an account obviously fake and anonymous. The person claimed to be married to a woman Andy was having an affair with, and poorly taken pictures of receipts of hotels, etc. One after the other, as I scrolled down the chat, Bella said it matched when Andy went away to meet with military buds. Something he, and I for that matter, has always done quite a bit to talk about this and that, memories, etc. As mentioned, we weren't in the same groups, so his friends are not mine, so I don't know. Anyway, Bella told me she had actually opened a sealed envelope with all the information on Andy's social media, email, financial accounts, etc. that he keeps in case he is seriously injured. I have one too, it's something they advise and a good idea, even when civil. And saw the receipts added up with his credit card, and it wasn't where he said he went with his buds. If this is all adding up, my sweet empathetic brother is right now spending family joining money on a weekend in a cabin in the countryside with his mistress. Supposedly, a married woman with a kid herself, according to the stranger. Bella had of course Facebook stalked her, but doesn't know her and they, Mistress and Andy, don't seem to have anything in common or mutual friends. A random meeting one time? A dating app? Who knows how they met? If this is true, why the fake account? We talked throughout the night. The result was that she will talk to a lawyer ASAP. Call them Monday. Just to know her rights, etc. Where we live, divorces are often more simple and less dramatic. She has taken her share out of the mutual bank accounts. He won't be notified. The real kicker was that she talked me into driving up there and confronting Andy. Basically, just letting him know they're busted and he needs to get it together and go whole. I told Bella I don't want to be more directly involved, but I will always be her friend and listen to her. She is family and mother of my niece and nephew. If Andy doesn't like my involvement, too bad. He's effing with the two kids I love as much as my own and their childhoods, their happiness and stable home. F that. F that guy. He just needs to be grateful I won't beat the ever-loving crap out of him if this is all true. And I'm the only one of us still in the reserve, so I'm able to. He's soft now. I'm so disappointed in my baby brother. He's a grown 32-year-old man. So yeah, typing from my phone as I watch my son sleep, talk to men, and waiting for deep sleep. Then I'll kiss my husband goodnight and drive up there. To the rental cabin. Not how I wanted to spend my Saturday evening. Update. So, Saturday night, I touched my boy in, and when he slept, I ate a quick snack with my husband before leaving for the cabin. My brother allegedly was staying at with his affair partner. 
It turned out to be a bigger property with a main house with kitchen and baths and a bunch of small cabins strewn out around the main. And as such, I had no idea how I was going to track down my brother. I contemplated talking to the front desk in the main house. But, dread of the conversation, I was at a loss. What was I supposed to say? The convoy wouldn't give out the details on their guests to some random stranger. My luck would have it that I, suddenly, after 45 minutes of trying to figure out what to do, <laughs> saw a motion in the corner of my eye, and it was my brother leaving the main house with a woman. He didn't see me, because I was parked behind them, with lights off. But it was clearly him. I didn't feel like following him like some spy, and already this whole affair felt like a ridiculous soap opera. So I just got out of the car and shattered his name. He just stopped dead in his tracks. And for a moment, I wondered if I was mistaken, and it really wasn't him. Then, he said something to the woman, who looked from him to me with wide eyes, and quickly left. And then he turned around and walked towards me. My hands were trembling, and I didn't know if I was nervous or furious or both, if one can be. He asked me what I was doing here, and I almost laughed. At this part, I remember most clearly, I said, Andy, don't be an idiot, along with a jerk. He told me to leave and to mind my own business and made a dismissive gesture. I said something to the effect of, I was minding my own business, Andy. I was playing with Sig and having a lovely afternoon when suddenly I had to leave my family to go tend to yours. And for what? So that you could run off like a college boy with no responsibilities. This is when he misspoke. He said, what do you care? It's not your marriage. He really shouldn't have said that. I don't know. I just thought back on his kids the night before, being so brave while their mother was trying to silently cry in the other room asking what dad was going to come home because their mother felt weird to them. Because he made her like that. I just lost it. I don't, Andy. I don't effing care. You can divorce Bella right now and marry the blonde random Karen woman in your cabin. I don't care. But you have two effing kids, Andy. They are your blood. And if you divorce them too, I swear my own son I will beat the ever-loving crap out of you and then off myself just to go to hell to beat you up one more time. Then I noticed lights getting turned on in the main house and tried to cool myself. I basically said this to him. He either returns tonight, Saturday, and gets his stuff in order, be that a divorce or begging for another chance, or he will be an utter pig to his family and kids. In that case, I, as his big sister, will have no problem with lowering myself to his standard and drag his new sweetheart through the same crap pigsty he's throwing his family into. I will not go after him, when he obviously doesn't care about anyone or anything but I will make sure that every person in her life knows about the affair and her causing pain to two innocent kids besides her own alleged child. I will pull every string to get her fired. I probably can't, but it will still be uncomfortable for her, I bet. I will personally deliver the news to her parents, siblings, friends, and neighbors. I would even piss on her if she was on fire. I don't care about her at all, and while I blame him and him alone for anything having to do with his family, I will have no squabbles, throwing her under a not a bus, but a tank, if that means I can get to him. He was really silent for a long time. Then he said, yeah, I was right. You needed to figure stuff out and own up. It was confusing for him to turn like that. It makes me feel it's fake. Hmm. He promised he would return home that night. I felt like there was nothing more for me to say or do. So I just went home. I sought for gas halfway and texted Bella to let her know. One and a half hours later, she texted me. He's back. He'll sleep in the guest bedroom and be with the kids tomorrow morning. Then we'll drive them to her parents and go to the park to talk and walk. That was Sunday, and I'm not pushing for an update. They need peace. I feel so empty. It feels so hollow that he couldn't see all these things by himself, and that it took basically threatening his affair partner before he was woken from whatever dreamland he's walked into. And it's like, dude, who cares about her? But not your kids. Fine, maybe you're done with Bella, but the kids deserve so much more. And Bella does too. But I'm just saying, even if the marriage was unhappy, the children have no part of it but our hostages and their parents feud, and I honestly feel like I effed up. That he only went back because I threatened his affair partner. That was not my intention. I really wanted him to go back on his own account because it would be the right thing to do. But then again, he wouldn't have the affair, would he? I kind of feel like I lost my brother. This is not the man I once knew, and it really, really hurts. I haven't got a clue what happened to that guy, but he wasn't there by the cabin, just a fake lookalike. Only it was him and it breaks my heart. Time will tell what happens from this point forward. I know Bella still loves him. I think perhaps she loves him too much. And I feel Andy has no idea how lucky he is. At least he should have had an amicable divorce and not bag sapper like this. It really makes you question people, huh? It was all so dramatic, but the ending very anticlimactic. I guess that's real life and not the soap opera I felt like earlier. I just hope Andy steps up no matter what happens. 
Let's see some reactions. Arrogant1 says, You did well. Thanks for the update. Yes, it's very disturbing to learn someone you care about is capable of that. But he was always capable. He always had the tendency. You just now figured it out and know the truth. I love that you let him have it and that he went back home. The situation needs resolution no matter what it is. He needs to face reality. Good job making him do just that. Another quick comment from Advanced Cut 8025. Expose the affair partner. Cheaters deserve nothing. The OP responded, Thank you. Too many people say, It's not her fault. Leave her alone. Or his fault, whatever fits. And unless they are completely in the dark, there is something wrong with someone who is with a married person, especially when kids are involved. If you are so in love, tell them to come back when they sorted out their affairs. Apart Locksmith 1 adds in as a final comment, Well done. It might not feel like it now, but in time, you'll come to realize you did the right thing. I hope your niece and nephew get through this okay. Bella too. They all deserve better. Okay, moving on to the next story. My ex-husband cheated on me with his sister-in-law. Three years after divorce, why am I still so angry? Names changed. So my ex, Sam, cheated with his sister-in-law, Lisa brother's wife, and his brothers, Joe, unexpected and tragic death. Joe and Lisa had two daughters, ages nine and three. I offered to help Lisa in any way I could. I sent cash in case she needed a few emergency dollars. I sent food. I had a photo of daddy pillows made for the kids so they could still hug their daddy. It was horrible. He kept making excuses for me not to go with him, always citing Lisa's anxiety. I started checking his phone in the phone account. I put proof in his face. Two days prior to my Joe's death, I had dinner with both the guys. They were both totally trash-talking Lisa. I actually defended her. I said that it might be appropriate for her to see a psychic, as she claims anxiety is her excuse to her manipulative and bitchy behavior. I'm a psych patient myself. I think she meant she to go see a psychiatrist. Clever. It was horrible. He kept making excuses for me to not go with him, to check on the girls, every day or so. The lies started as absent information and escalated to outright lies within a few weeks. They attended some sort of grief group together, and I was told that I was not welcome to join them. Even though I lost Joe also. Thing is, prior to this, Sam was an upright guy. I don't think he ever lied to me. Never mind cheated on me. I did the sleuthing, and he followed behind me changing passwords. I downloaded 140 pages, double-sided, of their texts. He told me that he did not want to be divorced, that he just wanted to help Lisa get through these first few days, weeks, months, etc. So, now we are divorced. He lives with his sister-in-law's girlfriend. I have mostly moved on. I moved to another city and state to be closer to family. I have a steady boyfriend. My life is good now. So why do I still ruminate periodically and still get so much anger toward them both? I saw her a couple of times since Sho's death, prior to my leaving Sam, as she blatantly ignored me and or was rude as he pretended not to notice. I know Joe's loss was particularly horrible for both Sam and Lisa. They actually watched Cho die. I know that surviving a trauma together creates a bond. I tried to respect their more severe than my grief. I did not argue when I was left out. I even asked Sam if he just wanted to go help Lisa raise the kids, since that was all he talked about, was her and the kids. He denied those things but did not change the behavior. I finally walked out with my two dogs and some clothes. They planned a dinner party in my house while I was gone. I am still in therapy. I still cannot fathom how I was treated. Why are they so mean? I would never do that to someone. I wish I could be a fly on the wall. I can imagine that Lisa is any less bitchy now than she was then. I know that Sam is not her late husband and he cannot replace Joe. In fact, this all stinks as she planned his death. She asked Sam to dispose of Jack's medication including Coumadin, a blood thinner within days of his death. She did not call Mime on one until after she called Sam and he arrived driving from five towns over. This happened the first night Sam rotated back to the night shift. Paramedic asked her to come talk to Joe because they were losing him. She refused. No autopsy. Straight to cremation. Joe had credit card debt in the tens of thousands and that went away with his death. Lisa immediately won for the younger, better wage earner brother. She bought a house with cash after insurance paid out. The whole thing stinks and I honestly hope that someone someday will treat Lisa and Sam as horribly as they treated me. I want to not think about this as it still upsets me, but it happens. It mostly happens when someone else has been mean or thoughtless. Meds are being adjusted. It has been four years since Joe's passing and three years since I was divorced. When I have to go back to my home state, 
I have to fight anger as well as depression, as this area was home for most of my life, and now he has taken that from me. When I go there, I have to fight the desire to go to his, her house, and or place of employment, for some sort of imaginary throwdown. I only need to go there about four times a year, but it is tough. Any suggestions would be welcome. A couple comments from the community before we wrap things up for this episode. The alcoholic's wife says, Honestly, these two sound awful. It definitely did you dirty, and you are truly better off without them in your life. I think you're selling yourself short and all the things you have done to help yourself. You move to a new place and are surrounding yourself with caring people and are in therapy. Keep up with therapy. Continue to put time and space between you and this gruesome twosome. Claustrophobic says, I think it hurts more because of the trauma, to be honest. Take it with a brother dying and these guys are still not worth having in your life. Trauma has a way of bringing people together, even you with them. If he just cheated with his stepsister, you would realize he's trash and there's this extra layer of explanation. This feeling like they fill the hole for each other that you couldn't fix. However, the trauma is keeping you there with them. The fact that they could do all this, to callously and carelessly hurt others while they're hurting, makes it that much worse. Also, it's been years. Being nice is beyond unnecessary at this point. I would just pretend they don't exist while being as happy as possible. If they ever say anything, just ask if he's still screwing his sister and if she'll move on to his dad after he dies. You don't owe them respect. You respected his brother. He's dead. Just like the husband you thought you had. Rather it be from trauma or if this was always him. You don't have to hold back anymore. Be as disrespectful as possible. You waited three years. Well, they allegedly waited a week after his death before they started seeing each other. 